Princess Anne, the Eno Nonsense Royal, once again just gets on with it. This week brought more evidence why Anne, the Princess Royal, is the best King Britain will never have. When the princess discussed her older brother, King Charles III, and the monarchy's many challenges in a, rare, interview with CBC, she defended the monarchy in a more relatable way than the king ever could. Her commentary and dry wit also underscored what's compelling, and sometimes absurd, about Windsor watching as sport. He raced the 411 on N, second child and only daughter of Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip. Former Olympian, Montreal 1976. Long considered her father's favorite child. First of the late Queen's children to divorce, later remarried to retired naval officer Timothy Lawrence, a former equerry to her mother, in the Church of Scotland. Has two kids, for whom she declined titles. Survived a 1974 kidnapping attempt in which her bodyguard was shot. Regularly logs more public duties than any other royal. Rewears decades old clothes. Feeds chickens in full makeup. When interviewer Adrian Arsenault asked if conversations are emerging about royal relevance today, the princess said, There will be, everywhere. It's not a conversation that I would necessarily have. I think it's perfectly true that it is a moment when you need to have that discussion. But I would just underline that the monarchy provides, with the constitution, a degree of long term stability that is actually quite hard to come by any other way. Will the king follow through on rumored plans to reduce the number of royals supported by taxpayers? I think the slim down was, was said in a day when there were a few more people around. Cough, Andrew. Cough, cough, Harry and Meghan. It doesn't sound like a good idea from where I'm standing. Told the king, in the wake of British media reports questioning the monarchy's ties to the slave trade, offered new and tacit support into researching the affiliation, she replied, well you know more than I do. I rather suspect that was the media's interpretation of that particular deal. Who knows who came up with that idea? When Arsenault said, you don't sound worried about the health or the longevity of the monarchy, and parried, I think you're putting words into my mouth, as they say. And is honorary colonel of the Blues and Royals, the second most senior regiment of the British Army. In that capacity she will perform the role of Goldstick-in-Waiting, now one of two symbolic positions, dating to medieval times, entrusted with the safety of the sovereign. This means she will ride on horseback, in uniform, behind the coronation coach. After she described the role, she acknowledged the symbolism of protecting the monarch, then quipped, not least of all, it solves my dress problem. Watch the interview for more. In the wake of public backlash against the coronation, homage of the people, officials at Lambeth Palace, the residents of the Archbishop of Canterbury, clarified that the language in Saturday's coronation service is an invitation, not an order, to swear allegiance to the king. A Sun poll found 53% of Britons do not plan to recite the pledge. As we suspected, not very appealing. Security scare, police arrested a man outside Buckingham Palace Tuesday night after he threw suspicious items onto the palace grounds, the Post reported. Metropolitan Police said the man tossed what they believed to be shotgun cartridges, which were examined at the scene. Police performed a controlled explosion of the items as a precaution, they said. You asked, we answered. Post Opinions columnist Eugene Robinson turned his weekly QVEA with readers into a royal chat on Tuesday, and we co-hosted. An edited excerpt. Question What are the chances that the UK abolishes the monarchy within the next few decades? Robinson, my opinion is that the British monarchy will be around for many decades to come. In Britain, at least. I believe fewer and fewer Commonwealth countries will recognize the British monarch as head of state. And I think the monarchy is objectively diminished after Elizabeth's death. But it isn't my sense that British royalty is in its last throes or anything. Certainly not yet. Question Does the fact that very, very few Britons can remember a coronation in their lifetimes make it harder for Charles III to justify why it is all necessary? Robinson I think it does. 
The whole thing of having a monarch who is not Elizabeth II is new to the great majority of British subjects. And the fact that hardly anyone remembers the last coronation gave Charles the opportunity to radically redesign and modernize the ceremony. This he did not do. Read the rest of the chat here. In addition to recycling thrones in his coronation service, Charles will wear vestments or special garments worn by past monarchs, including his grandfather and great-grandfather. Significant items include the super tunica, a full-length gold coat based on ecclesiastical vestments from medieval times, and the imperial mantle, akin to a robe, worn over the super tunica. The imperial mantle to be used Saturday was made for the coronation of George IV in 1821, it is the oldest vestment being used in Charles' crowning ceremony. Princess Anne, the Eno Nonsense Royal, once again just gets on with it. This week brought more evidence why Anne, the Princess Royal, is the best King Britain will never have. When the princess discussed her older brother, King Charles III, and the monarchy's many challenges in a, rare, interview with CBC, she defended the monarchy in a more relatable way than the king ever could. Her commentary and dry wit also